last video, one of the previous videos, we discussed about convolution and how to implement convolution on a GPU. We'd also we'd be discussing about an alternate strategy to implementing uh, convolution on GPUs today. So last time we discussed, I think, two strategies for implementing convolution on a GPU, and those were like in those both of those strategies we treated convolution as a convolution but today we'll be discussing how how to treat convolution as a matrix multiplication so we would first we would essentially reduce the convolution uh, problem into a matrix multiplication problem and then um, uh, implement matrix mu matrix multiplication on a gpu instead and the idea i got the idea i was reading the this paper qdnn efficient primitives for uh, deep learning and i saw the idea for an alternate for how uh, convolution can be implemented in an alternate method, uh, alternate way i got the idea from this paper so let's just cover this paper in brief first uh, so the idea behind qdnn i think this is a very old paper like it released in 2014 and the idea behind this library is to uh, give a standard high performant uh, implementation of kernels for for uh, various largely used uh, operations related to deep learning so for example they would provide a, a an implementation of convolution an implementation of uh, let's say some activation function and things like that in this library Okay, and uh, let's get to how they model convolution in this library. So uh, let's say the data matrix we have is in the form of NHCW, where N is the number of images, C is the number of channels in the image, H and W are the height and width of the images. Note that this is not in the format NHWC, we sometimes have uh, images in this format, but here we have in this format NHCW. And the filter that is a convolution kernel is in the format of K, C, R, S, where K is the number of uh, output, number of filters, C is the number of channels in the images, R and S are the size of the kernel. Like this is the height of the kernel and this is the width of the kernel. This is the width of the kernel, this is the height of the kernel. And finally, after doing convolution um, of D, uh, convolution of uh, um, convolution on D by F, we get an output which is of the dimensions n k p q. Why n k p q? Because n is the number of images. K is the number of output filter number of filters like convolution filters we had so the number of like the second dimension of the output would be k because that is how convolution works and pq is the reduced dimensions after we do convolution on the on each image and uh, the calculation of pq you can uh, like p and q depend on various factors like what is the stride what is the padding uh, for convolution so we can just calculate P and Q from a formula, a standard formula. Okay, and finally, this is the implementation that they follow. Is, uh, nothing special. We just have to duplicate the data matrix some number of times. So to uh, what we basically do is inputs, originally inputs were nh nc nchw and the filters were of the dimension filter was of the dimension k c r s and the output was supposed to be in the dimension n k p q this is the convolution problem but to model it as a matrix multiplication problem we transform or reshape d into dm where dm is has where dm is a two dimensional tensor note that these are four dimensional tensors right 
n k p q these have four dimensions this has four dimensions this has four dimensions but dm we would model it as a two dimensional tensor uh, with this shape and fm also we uh, model it as a two dimensional tensor with this dimension and we would say that om is equal to fm cross dm this is a matrix multiplication cross product oh sorry matrix multiplication sign so fm this mu multiplied by this so this would have the dimensions of k cross npq and if you see this uh, is the output matrix we required we wanted and this is the output uh, matrix we are getting from like om so after getting om we'll have to reshape it again into n k p q format so if we are able to get om we're done basically because reshaping is not very challenging okay so fm you can see fm has the same di same number of elements as f so that is not a problem but dm has more elements compared to d and how many more elements um c and p q mm, c n r s p q so dm the number of elements of dm divided by number of elements of d is r s p q divided by h w now p q divided by h w p p and q would always be less than h and w respectively so this is less than equal to r s so we can see, so from this this is an observation and also we we would i would show you that each element so what this means is in the matrix dm there are certain elements from d that are repeated and each element from d can be repeated at most rs number of times and you'd you'd understand why this is the case when we look at how we formulate d and nfm matrices okay so this right here is the f matrix f tensor like original f tensor which was supposed to be a four dimensional tensor uh so this is the f assuming we had uh so what was the dimensions of f f was kcrs okay kcrs kcrs since assuming k is equal to 2 we'll have so we first uh break f into k like k sets let's say set let's call them a set and r s is 2 2 so r comma s is 2 cross 2 so each of this filter is a 2 cross 2 matrix and we have uh c such matrices so there is three such matrices in the first set and similarly for the second set and we uh, also represent like this is the original t tensor four dimensional tensor which was of the format uh, n c h w where n is one c is three so we have three such images one two three s w is three comma three so we have three cross three each image is three cross three with three channels okay uh, so this is the first channel of the image, second channel of the image, third channel of the image. And we can see that we, um, from, uh, from this D and this F, we, from this D, we formulate this matrix, which is DM, which is a two dimensional matrix. And this matrix FM, which is also a two dimensional matrix. So from D and F, which are four dimensional tensors we formulate two dimensional matrices fm and dm and we finally do a matrix multiplication fm cross dm to get matrix om and if you observe what does this multi uh, what does this uh, element of om uh, represent 
it represents the f the ma matrix multiplication between like this is f naught okay here i don't know why in this paper uh, they have mentioned in this way i according to my understanding i feel like uh, this this should be d naught d1 d3 d4 d1 d2 d4 d5 d3 d4 d6 d7 d4 d5 d7 d8 and similarly for green and blue channels as well i don't know why this is written in this way uh, from my understanding it should be the opposite so let's proceed by what i understand so assuming the elements were d0 d1 d3 d4 when we multiply uh, like in this element we would have the multiplication d0 f0 plus d1 f1 plus d2 f2 plus d3 f3 plus similarly for green and blue channels so this basically represents the uh, the output we get when we convolve the filter over like this part of the image we convolve this filter over this part of the image so this is the first element now in the second element second element we have this is the second element so here we get f naught d1 so f naught d f naught d1 plus f1 d2 f1 d2 plus f2 d4 plus f3 d5 so this is basically the second like after this we will shift the filter here right in convolution so this is the second run of convolution where after shifting by one so this is like the second element and in the third uh, run of the algorithm we shift the filter here fourth run we shift the filter here so this is the third and this is the fourth run and similarly so this this was for this row right now for the second row of fm this represent this represents um uh like this okay om the dimensions of om were k cross npq so this is the second k and k in this case is 2 so this is the this is for k is equal to 2 this is for k is equal to 1 okay so once we have om we just reshape it so you can see that the all the elements of om have all the information of the convolution of d with f so once we have this uh, we can reshape om into o and we'll get the re required result the only the, the advantage of this is uh, we can formulate convolution as a matrix multiplication operation and we have matrix multiplication operation uh, like this matrix multiplication operation is highly optimized uh, because the ratio of the number of flops uh, here like uh, yeah because it is highly optimized because the ratio of number of flops to the amount of data we transfer which is the arithmetic intensity of the kernel is very high for matrix multiplication kernels so this is the this is the good thing about this formulating convolution as a matrix multiplication operation but the bad thing about this is uh, we have to when we are formulating dm from d dm is bigger than d and we see that uh, each element of dm can be represent can, of d can be duplicated at most rs rs number of times so for example d4 like the element d4 comes here here and here and here four number of times why four because r is two and s is two uh, so it can be repeated rep rep at most rs number of times why rs because you can see right the the filter would be here then here then here then here so this d4 element is required four number of times uh, and in, in, in a general case 
if we have this as the input image uh, and this as the kernel which is r comma r comma s has dimension r comma s this element can be repeated like um, like this element would be needed at most if if let's say r s like this is more than r this so, so r this is this would be r this would be r, s if this is s greater than s this is greater than s this is greater than r this is greater than r then this element would be repeated would be needed in the convolution when the filter is here 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 and so on so like uh uh if we shift if we are shifting uh in this direction the, the filter in this direction for r runs of convolution for like for r runs of r shifts of the convolution filter we'll still have this um uh element in scope of the filter and also similarly in this direction for s runs so it will be needed for r cross n runs of like placing the filter over the image anyway so yeah, yeah so basically we need to duplicate uh there's a lot of duplication that is happening here uh and the size of dm can be rs times the size of d so this is a drawback of this approach uh but i think the way they uh handle this is they do like there are strategies in matrix multiplication for big matrices so they do something very similar i'm not a, i'm not really sure about that uh, i'll cover that in one of the next videos